All right, let's make some 3D printed toys. Today we're going to be making this cute little scared elephant and teaching you some advanced box modeling, also some other cool um, tricks and tips. So let's get started. So we'll do file, new, and general. And first things first, we always want to save. So let's go file, save as, and I just have this blender folder and we'll call this box animal. So to first start off, let's twiddle up our studio just to give us a little bit more room and let's get rid of Suzanne. So we'll just click on her and how do we delete? And that's right. You can just hit X on your keyboard and delete it. So today we're going to make one of my favorite animals, which is the elephant. So we're going to start off with a cube. And after you take this lesson, if you want to make other animals, uh, you know, feel free to make your own favorite animal and share it on the Discord. But we're going to do Shift A to add a cube. And it's really tiny, so let's go ahead and scale it up, maybe to like 25. There we go. And that looks pretty good. Go ahead and hit period on your numpad just to kind of zoom in there. And it's always good practice to rename your layers. So go ahead and go over to the right and double click on cube and rename it elephant. So we're going to do some subsurf box modeling, which is very fun, especially just to make like some little toys. So let's go over to our modifiers and we could go to add modifier subdivision surface, but a quicker way to do it is just click on your cube and do control three. And that will add the subdivision surface modifier with a value of three. So a quick way to do that. But notice if we tab over into edit mode, it is still a square, but we have our subdivision surface and that's going to let us do some cool um, box modeling, but keep everything very curvy and kind of cartoony looking. So head on over to your tools to the left. If you can't see them, just hit T on your keyboard and that'll bring up your tools. And we're going to use the loop cut. You may have to scroll down if you can't see it but it looks like a box with a line going down the middle. So go ahead and click on loop cut, or you can do control R and just hover your mouse over the line here. So it's kind of going down the front and notice we've got this loop cut and slide. Go ahead and just crank that up to two. And then we're going to do the same thing for the, the horizontal. So just get it to where that yellow line appears, click and then increase to two and do it over here as well, right there. So we're kind of making like a Rubik's cube. And there we go. And we can go back to our selection or you can just hit W on your keyboard. And now we've got this really cool Rubik's cube. And notice that our, it doesn't look like a, a sphere anymore. It looks more of like a, a curvy box. And that's the kind of look we're going for. So let's stay in edit mode and let's add some color just for fun. So let's go to our little materials preview and do new and maybe make it just red. You know how we like the red and we'll go over to material preview or heck I like going to Eevee. So let's just go on into Eevee. You can be in any mode. It doesn't matter. And so this is looking pretty good, but what we're going to do is use all these tiny cubes to make the legs and the eyes and the ears and the snout and the tail. Uh, but I want to show you a quick way to, kind of let Blender do half of the work for you. Um, so we're going to use a, another add-on called the Auto Mirror. And you can find that over on the Edit tab. And if you can't see it up here in the top right, you may have to turn it on. Just go to Edit, Preferences, and then under Add-ons, just type uh, Auto. And then make sure Mesh Auto Mirror is checked. And then that way, there you should see it. And so under the auto mirror, we just want to click auto mirror X. So just click on this auto mirror button and watch what happens to our cube. So click, and there we go. Notice half of our, our geometry went away, but our, our red curvy cube is still intact. And that's because say if we, you know, click on something and hit G to grab it, it's going to auto mirror that on the other side. So just hit escape to get out of that. Make sure you leave everything kind of how it was. And we can kind of take a look at what's going on under the hood if we go to our modifiers. Notice we have our first modifier, which was our subdivision surface. We can twiddle that up. And the auto mirror added the mirror force and deleted half of our geometry automatically for us. 
So there we go. So that's pretty cool. So usually you can use this when you're making like characters or maybe something that just needs to be perfect on both sides and you don't want to model everything twice. So I use this a lot and I just wanted to share this little tip with y'all. Now we've got our foundation set up. Let's go ahead and jump into the next video where I'm going to show you some really cool extrude tools and some inset tools um, to help turn this cube into an elephant.